planes have been flying around here all day trying to get pictures of these loungers I just made. So, they're exclusive to you. Stick around. I'll show you how I did it. Plans are available at island-crown.com. Hope you enjoy it. All right, I've got all my components cut, and there are there's like a front leg unit and a rear leg unit. Front leg unit, front leg unit has a leg that goes to the ground that's supported by a leg support. The rear leg unit has a leg that goes to a wheel, and that's supported by the same as this, a leg support. So we need to build some of those components. Same with this one. Very nice. And we have the good side is up. This is the front leg because it goes down like that. And this is the rear. So I know what my dimension was. Where that ties in, I've already marked it. Actually, I've already drilled the uh, mortise for it, but I haven't done this side yet. I want to line up these marks and then transfer this mark so I know it's perfect. Same thing on this side. Line up these marks and transfer this one. So, I'm going to drill these two mortises and then connect these leg units to the uh, main body support. Actually, I could do that right now. One side at a time. Put some glue in there. We took all these units out of the clamps. This is the inside. It's the uglier side. It's got some damage on the edge, which would be covered with the seat slats. Turned around, that's the show side. 
the presentable side. Um, what we need to do now is drill a hole for the axle, for the wheels. And what that is, it's 3 8 all thread that's going to go through there. I've got my four stretchers right here. One of these has a channel taken out of the center of it, which that's where the threaded rod will be. And when it's right side up, you'll never see the rod. It, it works very well as a stretcher and it hides the rod. Okay, here we are now. Time to put the uh, seat slats into position. So I'm going to start in the center. Just put one screw on each side. Is it dead? On my mark. And I'm not driving it home. I want to leave the screw very flush. I countersunk these precisely and I want to keep it nice and flush. I might zoom in on that in a second, but that's a nice look right there. So I'm going to put this on the mark, on my pencil mark, but also make it flush. It's also already very flush right there. And here's another thing. I designed this to have half inch spacing. And I found out that my half inch dowels are very convenient spacers. Yeah, I gotta put some of these over now. And with the spacers, you can do several at a time without going crazy. Give me one more. Thank you. So, put a little pressure on it that way. Instead of having to measure each one, and instead of uh, wondering if it's square, the, we know the spacers are all consistent. So I can remove the spacers. And continue this again over here and then continue in that direction and then after they're all set come back and drive in that second screw on everything but look how nice and consistent that looks and then So I temporarily installed the first 15. There's 15 that fasten into this outer rail. And then it switches. I, I take another one. And I cut it. I, I cut the ends off at an inch and a half. And the ends screw into the outer rail but the inside will screw into the the back supports because the back support the back support is going to hinge right about here and when that lifts up this inside this piece here 
will swing down like kind of like that and then comes back up kind of like that i didn't want to just cut it off here and then you see a void here i think that would look a little bit foolish so i wanted to put the little pieces on the ends and then this one in the middle and it all kind of has some sense about it so the next step here is going to be locating the spot that's going to be drilled out where is it i just had it i still have it um i i take it i take this end of it just past the the main rail just like a 32nd of an inch half of a 16th and then I, I take a mark dead center of this. This is two and a half inches. So an inch and a quarter. I transfer that mark over this way and I go down a half inch. That's going to be the center of, of a quarter inch hole. And I have a drill right here, a quarter inch. And there's going to be a nut insert going into here with a five sixteenths drill. And, and then there's going to be a quarter inch screw that goes through here. It's a machine head screw, not a wood screw. It's a machine head screw. I think this is called a nut insert, threaded insert. Now I'll have a link for these also. There's the threaded nut insert. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole through here, which is going to take this quarter inch with a washer. And, and then... Uh, it's going to have about an inch or so left over of that inch. There's a little spacing between these two boards and then the nut insert, the threaded insert will go into here. Get it flush with the top and then I'm going to mark it with this. Just a little bit of a mark right there. And I'm going to finish that off with this 5 16 bit. And I put a little flag on there so I know when to stop. Because I don't want to, certainly don't want to drill all the way through. I'm just going halfway through, which is enough for the, for the threaded insert. Perfect. Look at that. Very nice. And then, and then this will thread into, it's threading in there. And then that will be the pivot point for the back. Not bad. We'll do the same thing on this side. And then we could start fastening these down. Space this out. And then we could uh, put our, uh, half inch dowel spacers again and continue bringing these on out okay so I got my uh, screws in there not not too tight but they're you know they're threaded three quarters of an inch so they're in there pretty well very nice it's got a Phillips head on them uh, washers on either side and then let me show you this. I've with a couple of half inch washers and a few extra layers of tape, uh, I made some eighth inch shims here and here. So I keep a little space between these two. And I just gently put a little pressure holding it there. Because when I take the, the shims out and the clamps off, I want that to come down and, and not be rubbing on either side. I want it to comfortably come down and, and lay into here. So, also, you see these next set of seat slats. The, the holes that are drilled are not for the outside. The holes are for, the, the screws are going to go into this back support. And, and not into the outside rail. So, like I did the others, I'm going to put five or six of these out. I'm going to continue with the spacing. 
the same half inch spacing all the way across. So that's it. And I could take these clamps off, even though I haven't put the second screw in all of these, I could remove my shim and it moves very nicely. You see where it's, uh, where it pivots at right there. And also you see, I have this other chamfer on here and the reason it's there is so it doesn't hit this stretcher and it clears it safely. This all comes down. This is the cut piece here. I bumped it a little bit. I can clean that up. Another thing, the grain continues through. Even if it's not a massive grain, you, it looks better with the grain continuing through. And when I pick this up, you see how it pivots. It, it needs, that pivot needs to be in the center and it needs to be up high so that this clears the underside of this one and that this clears the top side of this one. See that doesn't clear by much but it clears and it's a nice look. So I didn't show you the full process of this but this is the uh, the device that maintains the the seat position. It'll get fixed and pivot from here and it, it's got uh, on the prototype I did I put a 45 on here and this time I decided to put the uh, I've got a router a 3 8 round over which works pretty well this is three quarters so it gives you basically a half round hitting it from either side and I've got this stop block here also for the first position and then the second position and then so let me show you how this attaches the insert fits on a six mil uh, allen screw but i found out that a t40 torx also fits in there perfectly it's a perfect fit the torx i found this out a couple years ago the torx is designed uh, with six points just like an allen head a hexagon and several torx bits fit several uh, of these allen heads and they work really well especially if you have like an impact rated torx they won't bend over or strip or if they do it'll take a while so i just put that in instead of fiddling with the allen wrench my battery's a little weak but still that goes in very nicely let me get the other one Perfect. And that's going in nicely. See, it will be up here. Let's so the next step will be to make the piece that goes here that has a few grooves in it and install it. So here's what we got. This is going to go in between the two stretchers. And I'm going to complete some cuts here. But I, this is three quarters of an inch. So I drilled a seven eighths inch hole at each location. And I'm still going to finish this 45 and a straight cut here to give it kind of like a gun rack sort of finish. Um, and and then I'm going to route the uh, eighth inch round over on everything. I I'm going to go to the bandsaw to make these cuts and and then clean them up with the sander if I need to. But then that'll go right in there like that. So here I got this cleaned up. That'll go in the center. 
and then this can slide over and drop into place just like that and then drop into the next position if my hand wasn't there so before I drill and install I'm gonna put some roundovers here just so it's a little more presentable like everything else is looks good let's go install it you see on this side after I've tapped it from over there I've, I've got what do I have exposed here uh, almost two inches so I put my washer I put my sleeve which fits very nicely then I put the wheel and one more washer and then there's still enough threads for my cap nut spins very nicely even after I snug this up I still have my one by twos to put on the ends and then everything is complete so let's work on that so I've drilled my holes in here I, the holes are in line with these holes put these spacers back in which is perfect I could bring this flat bar in and split the difference in my gap so now you see the full pivoting action everything clears everything so these last two seat slats, end slats, are inch and a half and the same length as these. They need to be flush on the bottom and flush on the ends. It's pretty good there if it doesn't move. And it did not move. Good for me. That moved a touch, but it's all right. And then this one goes here. When I say split the difference, I'm talking about the, the reveal in here. Keep it the same as this one. Keep those reveals consistent so that they're not larger going to smaller. Then we have the other side to do. And look how nicely it rolls around. So we want to get it, keep it flush with this and with this at the bottom and the outsides. is pretty good there but the screws go into the next piece there now as you pick it up, it falls into place. And then this falls into the same spot. And then in the last spot right there. And then to close it out, pick it all the way up, drop it all the way down. One last thing I'm going to do, one final thing. When you pick this up, you feel the back edge of here. Same thing over there when you pick it up to roll it around. So I'm going to take my, and I'll do it right now, my eighth inch round over. And I'm just going to, same as this end, three six eighth inch, I forget. That way when you grab it, 
it just feels a little more comfortable having some, something instead of a sharp edge. You've got a rounded edge to grab. Look at that. Very nice. That's complete. Here's another thing. The way that back comes up at an angle like that, it allows you to lift higher if you needed to. And instead of being limited to your lift, you can lift as high as you need and still roll it around. It's eight sits 18 inches off the ground, which is a standard chair. Very comfortable. I said I was finished. I'm going to do a final sanding on everything. Anyways, I hope you like it. I, I expect I'm going to be selling a lot of these um, I, after I get the word out. There, there are several of these in my area, in my market of furniture, and the, the ones that I see are, they've been out there a while, and I think this is a better design, I, especially with the wheel. The other people don't have wheels. I haven't seen any wheels. I think these wheels will last a long time. And don't forget, if you enjoy watching my videos and you like the type of projects I work on, go to island-crown.com and take a look at the plans I have for sale. I've got bar stool plans, rocking chair plans. I've got a captain's chair. I've got a giant Adirondack chair. I've, I've got bundles. I've got plans to make jigs. Uh, I got a number of different plans and they're all available for sale at island-crown.com. Go there and check it out.